All right, ladies and gents, so we live. The Macho Man Robot Savage is back with another video, and today I'm gonna be teaching you all about the War Pike. Now, many people have been asking me for a War Pike tutorial for a long time. I never really had the time to do it, but today, today the Macho Man is gonna show you how to properly use the War Pike and how to use it in various styles. Get ready. We're gonna switch over to the training grounds and the Macho Nerd's gonna take over to inform you about the entire process. Oh yeah! All right, you crazy punks. Here we are in the training grounds. Now, the first thing you need to know about the War Pike, all right, is the move list. The War Pike has several features that you need to be aware of. Number one, the special meter of the War Pike fills up as you deal damage, all right, and it has two styles of attack: piercing attacks, which cause wounding damage, and harvesting attacks, which can interrupt. Uh, they cost stamina, and they are designed to uh, basically build up your meter. Okay. These are the first and most important things to know. Now, the War Pike has four moves, or so they call four moves. Effectively, there's three combos, all right, and one special ability, which I'm going to show you right now. The first combo is called your Piercing Flurry. This is your entire light attack combo. One, two, three, four light attacks, and then you press and hold the light attack button, you'll be able to do plenty of piercing damage. Please note that the core damage is different from the part damage, all right? One, two, three, four, piercing. The core damage is actually close to your wound damage, just so you know, all right? This is in contrast to other weapons, whereby your core damage matches your uh, part damage. And the reason for this is because this build contains acidic, okay? Now, if we were to remove the effects of acidic, uh, where is that? There it is. Okay, we're gonna remove acidic now, right? Watch this. One, two, three, four. The part damage and the wound damage um, sort of like half and half contribute to core damage, all right? So there's, there's a bit of a difference there which you need to be aware of. Now, the other type of combo is using your heavy attacks. So spin, spin, spin. Nothing but spinning. Okay, you'll notice that the part damage is effectively uh, roughly the same as the core damage. Now, there's a bit of a difference because it hit multiple, multiple parts there. Hold on, let me try that again. Oh, wait, better let it reset. Come on, reset, you stupid thing. There we go. You'll notice that the part damage and core damage are pretty much in line. All right, so that's it for your harvesting attack. Now, those are the two main combos, but there's a third combo that most people aren't aware of. This is called the combo crossover. So if you look at your move list, Warpike attacks are interchangeable within a given combo. Reaching the end of either string of the combo causes the combo to end. All right, what this means is that you can use light, heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, and then this, this ends the combo. The last heavy swing ends the combo. Okay, this is actually used with the balanced spearhead mod to increase damage, all right, when you alternate attacks. Now you can do it in any order. You can do heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, but then this ends the combo, you see, because the heavy, the third heavy would be a combo ending trigger, all right? So that's something you need to be aware of. That's why when using balanced spearhead, the combo is always light, heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, and then that ends it. Now the alternative, now that's because you need to alternate between light and heavy attacks. Technically speaking, you could go one, two, heavy, one, heavy, one, and then heavy. Something like that to get in four light attacks, all right? So just so you know, you can do up to four light attacks before the combo end and the uh, two heavy attacks before the combo ends, okay? Reaching the end of either combo while alternating will end the full thing, all right? So that's the third combo you need to be aware of. Now we're gonna put acidic back because what I'm gonna show you now that you understand the Warpike combos and the specials, all right, is just the finer mechanics. And then I'm gonna show you how the Warpike is normally used in combat. All right, there are two styles to the Warpike. One is wounding, one is non-wounding. I will demonstrate both. But first and foremost, harvesting attacks charge up your meter really fast. When your meter charges up, you can load up your ammo. If you load up your ammo while it is not charged, now it needs to be at least to the first threshold, but if it's at the second threshold, Notice that your bullet only shows one, one little bar filled up, all right? And it will be much weaker when it comes to your attack. See, 
this tag did 87. From the same distance with the full thing, it does 875. So there's a drastic difference when you fully charge your bullet. That's why harvesting attacks are used to very easily charge this meter. All right, then you load up a full bullet that's fully special, okay? Warpikes have a lot of damage, so you don't need to worry too much about that. Now, now that you understand how the warpike works, let's see it in practical combat. So we're gonna go to the hunting grounds. I'm gonna show you the wounding style first, and we're gonna go to the Razor Cliff Isle solo, of course. We'll go there, and I'll show you the wounding style with the warpike, all right? Now, my warpike is level 20, and the reason I'm going to an easier area, all right, and being fully honest about it is just to show you the combat style. All right, I'm not gonna be like those other people out there that just show you a clip of this and say, oh, this is great, this is great. You know, that's five literal ways you can lie to your audience. Just go and show them that kind of bullshit. You know me, I don't do that. That's why a lot of people are like, oh, your videos are unprofessional. How about fuck yourself, okay? My videos are fully professional. It's just that I'm honest. And if you can't stand honesty, well, I'm sorry, okay? Go suck the dick of your uh, favorite doodle, okay? Thank you. All right, now, <laughs> now that my mini rant is over and we're loading in, all right, let's go see how this actually works in combat, okay? Now, with the wounding warpike style, there is something very important that you need to understand. First and foremost, right, the wounding warpike has acidic in it, so all attacks will contribute to wound damage. However, however, the wounding style, assuming you're in the hunting grounds or in escalation, it's your first behemoth, all right, did you know that while sprinting, if you press your light attack button, you will move into a charged sprint? This can also be used to interrupt behemoths, by the way, assuming you hit them dead on. Okay, it causes wounding damage and usually does pretty well. All right. Okay, now that I've demonstrated that, um, with the wounding style, what I'll normally do is I'll do my best to charge up a bullet first because why? I still deal wounding damage even when using my harvesting attacks. That's okay, that's what you want. Now, if I'm up close to the behemoth and it's not really attacking me, I will use my piercing attacks to get wound damage on. And you want this because um, you want to try and wound parts of the behemoth as fast as possible, assuming you are using a wounding style. This is because of the power of savagery. Once you've wounded a part, you can literally trigger 100% um, extra bonus damage due to savagery, which is very, very good. Hitting the wounded part, very dangerous for the behemoth, not for you. You're okay. And the more wounds you do usually with a wounding style, you will have something called Executioner's Spearhead. This will basically make it so that uh, the more wounds that the behemoth has, the more damage you deal as well. So I usually take advantage of a down behemoth. I'll wound more parts and just, just go ham on it. I'll take advantage of that 100% bonus damage and the behemoth dies really fast. And during this time, the first behemoth, I fill up lots of bullets. All right, this is because second behemoth onwards, I'll be able to use my Reckless Leap to cause a lot of wound damage. Also, another thing, if discipline on a wounding build, build, your discipline will also have wound damage added because of acidic. So 50% of the par damage gets converted to wound damage. It can actually wound, which is pretty hilarious. Um, all right, so that's pretty cool. Now we're gonna do that to this uh, Resicuri over here. We use the Reckless Leap to go in and it's insta wound right there, you see? Most of the time with the wounding builds, assuming that you're um, properly built and not going too far above your level, you'll actually be able to insta-wound, which is very, very good for you. Helps you dish out more damage, and at the same time, you know, it's just fucking cool. Oh, little bastard. So something like that, all right? I love how the Flaming Fist somehow it countered but didn't actually uh, dish out any damage, so love it. Just remember always what kind of attacks you're unleashing because harvesting attacks are great, but um, the wound damage is not great because you're only converting 50% of the part damage into wound damage. So you gotta be aware of that and just know that um, your harvesting attacks are strong, but they are mostly for charging up your bullets. Your, your piercing attacks are your wounding attacks, and that is what you need to be aware of. Alright, you really want to do it? Okay. 
Now, why did that not deal any wounding damage? Uh, well, because, number one, that part was already wounded. Um, obviously, if you already wounded a part or two, it's, it can be a bit hard to control exactly what you're hitting, but that's okay. You'll be able to tell which part hasn't been wounded yet by the fact that you'll still be able to deal red damage to it. Once you've wounded a part once, uh, you cannot wound it again. So just remember that, okay? The Behemoth only has so many parts you can wound during combat, so don't use it up too early and, you know, do control yourself a bit. Alright, that's it for the wounding playstyle. It's very simple to do, very simple to use. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change over to the pure damage style, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you. Okay, so hold up. Alright, are we back, you punks? Alright, you'll notice I'm in the same area, but this is a non-wounding combat style with the pike. So with a non-wounding combat style, in general, you'll be focusing purely on damage. So you may still use Reckless Leap, you may use Balanced Spearhead, it doesn't matter what you choose as your mod. Um, ultimately, the non-wounding style functions very differently, alright? You only use, you only wound in order to get your, um, bonus from the Aether Rush. Now, when you wound, you will get a bonus called Aether Rush. I know this wasn't covered during the wounding segment, but this bonus increases your damage, attack, and movement speed by about 15%, if I'm not wrong. I could be wrong, but, um, that mechanic we can double check later on. Let me first demonstrate, uh, how this is done in the, in the non-wounding style. So, with the non-wounding style, usually you have something like Iceborne going on, and if you're dealing with some annoying boy like this, you know, the non-wounding style generally just focuses on the spin attacks. So you don't have to think too hard. Alright, but you may get opportunities to wound even an annoying boy like this by mounting, doing other things, and during that time, you'll be able to do, just basically stab it in the butt. Very fantastic, right? I love that part of it. Non-wounding builds also tend to focus on adrenaline, so feel free to drain your stamina as much as you want. Alright, they usually have adrenaline, overpower, other things in there, because depending on how you play, you would just uh, basically be able to dish out extra damage to the behemoth. You may still use Reckless Sleep, and in which case, as you can see, once you've wounded the behemoth, you can just basically uh, have free reign over just smacking it down. Alright, now let me go check on that Aether Rush, because I think it is covered. Alright. Aether Rush, there we go. Um, Aether Rush grants increased damage, attack, and movement speed, and stamina regeneration for a short period of time. The actual percentage should be 15%. Let me just double check that with a quick Google search. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, it's 15%. There you go. Okay, grand. So now that you understand that, like I said, with non wounding builds, all you're focusing on is your uh, heavy attack most of the time. You will not end up using a lot of your piercing attack, and, and your damage is fairly consistent because you're not focusing on uh, wounding or anything like that. Like with the wounding build, once you wound, that's when you go ham with your harvesting attacks because the, of the 100% damage increase on the wounded area. But with the non-wounding build, none of that matters. It's a very, it's a very just spin to win type situation. Usually, that's why we have a lot of sustain in the non-wounding builds. Gives you opportunities to just uh, go a little ham. Alright, so usually um, something like this will happen. Now you can still take status effects, even Iceborne buffs, so please don't, please don't be silly. Alright. Now sometimes the non-wounding style will also have the alternating attacks because of balanced spearhead, that's completely fine and normal. Alright. In fact, that's okay, that's also one of the recommended styles because it helps boost damage. And usually the wounding builds, um, they'll take advantage of Malkyrions or the other uh, pike types other than uh, Chronovore because you get so many opportunities just to woo, uh, well not wound, sorry, to knock down, strike down the behemoth, things like that. So that is basically the two styles of Warpike combat. Um, there 
are a few other niche styles, but in general, these two are your main styles of combat, all right? So whether you go wounding style or non-wounding style, that's entirely up to you. I hope that this tutorial on the Warpike has been helpful to you. I hope that it helps you use the Warpike better. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. If you want to keep the Macho Man's channel running, because don't worry, because, you know, I don't get paid by dollars or anybody. I get paid by you guys. You can choose to subscribe using a channel membership, all right? So it costs only $3 a month for the lowest tier and there are additional benefits for higher tiers. You can also send super thanks on YouTube. You can drop a tip via the link in the description of the video. Or last but not least, you can purchase Asian robot merchandise via my store link in the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching and we hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. All right, let's move over to the thank you scene. Big thank you to September's top supporters. We got Bravo7910, Crampy D, Johnny Nara, FNX Killer43, Zavi Uzumaki, Alien Frost 80, Kazmantam, a lovely girl, Yuki no Kami, J Money13, Ravik, Starbuzz, and Michael Roberts. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for this amazing month of September. All right. Here's to many more in October. Catch you on the next one.